Christmas Minion Polymer Clay Sculptures. This is going to be part one, and which is just going to be the sculpting. So for this, I'm going to be sculpting minions and all of their little accessories and ornaments in the box. The tree is something I purchased, and the base is a wooden base that my dad cut out for me. And so, but everything else is handmade by handmade by myself. So all of the minions, I added all their hair, I made all of their clothing and accessories and their goggles and everything else out of polymer clay and then a couple other items that you will see in a moment and so that is the beginning there's going to be no painting or assembly just the sculpting so i used copper wire as a base and structure for all of them and then i wrapped them or just sort of bulked them out with some aluminum foil and so i did this for each of them the ones that are stacked they all have the same piece of copper wire that's going to add so much strength it really is important to make sure that they are all one piece and then i'll be bulking out each one on the stick almost like weird little corn dogs after you have all of your minions wrapped in the aluminum foil, you're going to want to cover the aluminum foil in some masking tape just to make little minion mummies. That's going to make them a lot smoother when you start adding the clay, which is what I'm doing now. So I'm going to be wrapping them in a layer of polymer clay that I just rolled out on my pasta machine and then smoothing that out with my fingertips and then carving out their smile. So after you have them all wrapped out and all wrapped up and relatively smooth and with a smile, you're going to want to bake them. Uh, from the next step, you want to make sure that they're completely cooked. Also, if you wanted to, you could take some light sandpaper and you could run that over them if they aren't completely smooth, just to help smooth out their skin, if you need to or if you'd like to. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you add little dots inside or at the top of their head for where you're going to want to make their hair. So before you start this process, make sure you have all your minions planned out exactly how you want them to look so that you know where they need their hair to be, what kind of holes, and also what kind of smile they have. So I know for this one that's in the middle, I want him to have his mouth open and his tongue, stick tongue sticking out. So I made sure I gave him a nice, big, wide open oval mouth just like that. And these tools that I'm using are just, they're a pick set that I got from a hardware store that is, they're just, they were really cheap when I got them and they were on rebate. So I decided to give them the go and give them a go and they're really nice. So then after they're baked, I'm going to start adding all of their clothing and overalls and arms and all that good stuff. So I first cut out the back of their overalls and then I just made it so it wraps all the way around them. And then I'm going to smooth that together once again using those tools as well as my fingers and cutting off any excess clay and making sure they're all filled in and that their overalls are nice and smooth. And then I'm going to roll out another section and then I'm going to be cutting that in a little bit different shape as you can see that they're kind of, it's swooping lines on the sides. That's going to be for the pockets and then smooth out below the pockets but nothing above, so not the top of the overalls. Um, and then I'm going to cut out a little shape for the pocket that goes on the front and then rolling out more yet again. This is gonna be for a snake and I'm gonna be cutting out his arms. So cut out two pieces of that snake that are the same length and then blend the arms up into the body. And even though the, the, the body is cooked and he is, that part's already hardened, it does still blend in really nicely. And then I'm going to be sculpting out their hands. So I cut two pieces of equal size clay and then I cut out the three little fingers and then I blended that into the arm or I added it to the arm and then I added the cuff of the glove up and around the wrist and then I blend the cuff down into the glove and not into the arm. That's going to make it look like he's wearing his glove. And so this guy is going to be the Santa Minion. So he has one hand on his hip and right there I just cut out the shape of a little list that he's going to be holding and the other hand and arm are going to be bent and then holding that list. So here's a second hand holding the list and then adding the cuff going around the hand, blending that into his glove but once again not into his arm just like that and so now that I have his arms in place I'm going to be wanting to add the straps of his overalls and so I'm going to cut two long strips of clay that are nice and thin like that adding them cutting them in place and the one thing I do want to mention is that the order of events is very important for sculpting these you can't sculpt his arms and then add his overalls because his arms are on top of his overalls if that makes sense and you can't sculpt or put on his the straps of his overalls and then add his arms because you won't be able to blend his arms very nicely into him so then i'm going to be adding his legs and the first leg is going to go over that copper wire that's also very important because that's going to add so much stability and then i'm going to be adding his shoes so i cut two pieces and the first one once again up and over the copper wire and then the second leg and the second foot, you're going to want to, after you have the foot in place, cut a little piece of wire once again and poke that through the foot and through the leg of the, of just like that. That's going to, once again, add so much stability and strength and make it so that once you start gluing and adding your minions onto their base, that it's going to be strong and it's going to last you a long, long time. And I also added a thin little snake, wrapped it around each of the feet, each of the, each foot. <laughs> that way it's going to look like he has a little bit of a sole on his shoe, a little bit of treading. 
and then I pressed two spheres of clay for his eyes, added his eyelids with just a little more clay, and once again, this is important to make sure that you know what facial expression you want them each to have so you can add that, and then I'm going to be rolling out more clay, cutting that into a nice long strip, or a couple nice long strips, and adding that around his eyes to make the the goggles. So you're putting this this little strips that you made on their ends so that they stick up but they're a little thinner if that makes sense. And then you put them both on and then blend them together so it looks like they're one piece instead of two separate separate things just like that. And I'm still using those tools. I really like these tools. I had never used them before but now that I have I love them. And then I just took and around the edge I added a little indent just to give them like a... if you look at their goggles you can see these details. And then I added little facets with tiny bits of clay around the goggles as well, just like that. So just add little, little in, or, you know, little dabs of more clay. And now I'm going to be rolling out the goggle strap. So I roll a nice, long, thin piece, wrap that around his head. And at any time, if you feel like your clay isn't sticking or adhering very well, just add a little bit of liquid clay and that'll act like glue and it's clear. So it's not going to change anything. So now for this guy, my sand dominion, I'm going to be adding his hat. So I just put a huge bit of clay on top of his head and then blended that in and down. And then I created a little point at the top, added a roll out snake, rolled out another snake for the trim, wrapped that around his head, and then poked it a whole bunch of times with just a dotting tool. This is going to make it kind of a furry type texture. This is, does not have to be perfect. Do it quick, do it kind of randomly, and it'll turn out really well. Add a post in his hat, and then add a little ball on the top of that, and poke that once again to make it a little furry. So now I'm going to be repeating all of those steps. Those are like the basic, all the basic steps on the rest of the minions. So overalls and arms and shoes and legs all of the, all of the minions get all of that things that are different are what they're holding maybe the shape of their mouth i know one of them i gave him his tongue sticking out those are things that you can change and personalize to each one maybe i have one of them is sitting down that's the same one with his tongue sticking out he's kind of a he's not really paying attention to doing what he's supposed to and then i know another one is holding a star so make sure that you personalize each one in that respect as you go along to make sure that they do have you know, the little details that are going to make them look like they're all their own minion. They're all their own person. And so I'm doing that now, adding this one. And so this one is going to be, he has his arms up on the side of a box. This is the box. And I've already made and cooked the box. So that's, that's done. And so I'm going to be sculpting him. He's got his hands on there and I want him to be baked with his hands on the box. That way when he comes out and I re-put him together, I know that his arms are going to fit together and it's going to be the right shape and his arms are at the right height and all of that. And I did not blend his hands into the box. I did not like use any liquid clay to glue them on, at least not yet. And so after it's baked, after they're both baked, you're going to cook them on the base with the box. When you take that out, you will be able to gently sort of pull them apart. That way it'll be a lot easier to paint. And so now I'm adding all the other details to this guy. And so I'm adding his straps now that his arms are in place. And I'll add his hands in a moment and making sure his feet are all in the right shape and all of that pocket. Now I'm going to be making sure his hands fit on the box just like that. Make both hands, rest them on the edge there, wrap the little cuff around, blend that in. So he's not very strongly attached to the box, just enough that I know that I can set him in the oven and he's not going to fall apart on me. And then I'm going to be doing, the last minute I'm going to show you is going to be the one holding the star. And I should have in advance put this wire for his arms inside his body um, right in the beginning when I was doing with the foil and I didn't it was I don't know a brain fart so I'm going to add that now and add his overalls and then I'm going to and as you can see I did take him off the stack he's one of those that's on the stack of three he's the top one I took him off I can put him back on later as long as I make sure that hole is open and so I'm going to be just doing his overalls so nothing too much just the front and back no arms yet and I'm going to bake that again so just the very, very beginning stages here. And I'm also going to be uh, baking his star at the same time. So I'll roll that out and then cut it out just like that. And I just sort of sketched it with a dotting tool so I knew where to cut. And then I'll sort of round out the edges and smooth out all of those lines I made just like that, making sure everything is nice. And then roll out a whole bunch, five, of these little circles and then stick them on the ends with a little bit of wire. And then I'll bake that so that's hardened and when I start adding it, his hands holding it, it's not going to move or adjust to get messed up because I know it's already cooked. So now I'm going to make sure my minion fits back on his post and I'm going to cut out his legs, take him back off, put his foot on, then his leg on, and then him back on there, blend his leg in. 
And then I'll add his other leg that's sort of sticking out behind him. He's reaching to put that star on. He's kind of tipping over. So he has that back leg up to help him balance. Add that other leg in. Put a little metal post in to make sure that leg stays in place. Add the snake going around for the tread of his shoe. And then for this one, when I added his arms, it is the hardest part his arms and his hands were for me. They might not be for you, um, but especially since I did that the wire at the wrong time, it just made it a little more difficult all throughout. So to make his arms first cut out the shape of his arms, the little or make the snake, and then cut a slice down the center of the snake and then wrap that around the wire. So as you can see, I have that opened up and then just blend that back together to remove or to hide that cut that you made and blend them in. And as you can see, some of that wire is still showing, so I'm going to cover up the rest of the wire with his overall strap, which makes the strap in a little bit of the wrong place, but since I was adding it later on, it's the best that I can do. And that'll work just like that. You really want to make sure that you do this so that they cook properly. Add that other strap fix that up. Add any little clay if you need to where there might still be some of the wire showing just to cover it up and make sure that that all works out. Fixing up his overall strap some more. Make sure you do add liquid clay for this because that bottom, the lower section of his overalls is already cooked so it's not going to hold on as well. And I'm going to be adding on the pocket and then I'm going to add his eyeball. So once again, it's just a little ball that a little sphere of clay that you press out and then wrap that around. He does not have an eyelid because he's got an open eye expression, and then the strap of his goggle going around, or the, the, I don't know what that part would be, the, that's not the lens, it's the frame, there you go, the frame of his goggle going around, add that line going around that, just to split it sort of in half, blend that out just a little bit because it was a little, wasn't quite smooth, add the strap of his goggle, now I'm adding the strap, and attaching that with some liquid clay, just like that. And then I also want to make sure that I add those little bits going around. I don't know why I didn't do them before. It doesn't really matter when you add them, just as long as you don't forget them. Just like that. And then I also, for all of them, I added there's a little connector piece between the goggle and the strap, just like that. So then I'm going to be setting them in a little glass that I have that is oven safe. And I sort of twisted his arms together and then that's going to hold them in place so that they're touching and it's like he's holding that star and then I'm going to set the star so it's straddling the edge of that cup or glass it's like a bowl and then I'm going to be adding his hands holding it covering up the rest of that wire and so like I said this part was definitely tricky and I'm sorry my head just got in the way and so you want maybe to do it a different way you can do it this way it did work it just was a little bit of extra work um so do however you like I did think in the end it turned out really good so I'm not too upset with all my little trial and errors. And you know, you can't expect a project to go perfectly smoothly. So I'm happy. If there's only a couple hiccups down the road, you're all good. So now I'm going to be making the little box. So first I made the base of the box with some aluminum foil, rolled that or folded that into a nice little square like that, secured it on the little edge with some more aluminum foil, just where it opens, make sure it doesn't open, and then repeated the process and made a little lid for it. And then I wrapped all of that in some more masking tape. And I'm not going to be covering the inside of my box with clay. I'm going to leave that just be the masking tape. You can paint the masking tape so it doesn't have to be this cream color. You can make it, I did it dark red, so it doesn't really matter in that way. It's not as smooth and doesn't look as nice, but I knew that I was going to be adding some tissue paper inside as well as putting the lid on top and I didn't figure you'd even see it anyway. So I did not see the point. So then I'm going to be wrapping up my box just like that with as much masking tape as I can possibly fit on there. That's going to really add some stability as well as making it a little smoother for when you're wrapping the box in clay, which is what I'm doing now. So I did two sides at a time. So there's the first two sides, cutting off the excess clay like that and rolling out some more, wrapping the other two sides up in the clay. And then once I have both sides on, I'm just going to smooth the seams on those two corners with my thumb. And I did add a little more clay because that one didn't quite meet all the way. So just smoothing that out, making sure it's all nice and together, and then smoothing it over on the top and the bottom to really hold it on to that metal and onto the base that we made with the aluminum foil. And then for the lid, I'm going to wrap it on both sides for the lid because I knew it would show a little more on this one. So I'm going to cut out two squares and then wrap that up, smooth that together. Once again, just with my thumb and my fingers, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. Once you have your box made to this point, I'm going to be adding the ribbons. So I'm going to start with adding ribbon around the box one direction and then going the other way. 
and then I'm going to take another piece of that and then I'm going to fold it in half twice, so two halves, and then connect them together with a little piece going around the middle. That'll be to make a bow. And with liquid clay, I'll glue the bow onto the center of the box, and then I'm going to add the ribbons going around the box itself. So we're going to have, I'm just going to it off camera there for a second, but just cut out a really long piece and then match the width of the ribbons that were on the top of the box and then wrap them around your gift box. So right in the center of each side, add a little ribbon. And then you can bake that. Now to make the ornaments, I'm going to cut out equal pieces and then shape them into bananas. And then fold a little piece of wire in half around a, cute, or around a dotting tool. And then poke that into the center of the ornament at the top and a little bit of liquid clay and then bake those. That's going to be for the hanger. And I'm also going to make a gift of a larger banana. So I'm going to sculpt that out and add the little indents going around it with that little carving tool I have. And then make a ribbon. So roll out a snake, flatten it, and then cut out the shape of just a long rectangle wrap it around my banana and then make a bow just like I made the bow for the top of the box. So two pieces, fold them in half, put them together, pinch them a little bit in the middle and then wrap a little piece around them and then glue that on. But I'm also going to make some tails of the bow. So I'm going to cut out another piece, two equal sections and then cut a triangle out of the bottom. So attach those first and then attach your bow. So now to make the reindeer antlers, because one of them is kind of decorated like little Rudolph, I'm going to be first sculpting out two pieces into a loose C shape and then adding two more points and then blending those extra sections into that main one with my fancy little tools. Repeat for the other process. And then for the Rudolph nose, I just added, I just sculpted out a sphere. Nothing too exciting, just there it is. And that is it. So that's the same thing I did for the other ornaments. And so this is the first part. So in the second video, which I will be uploading later on, there'll be a link somewhere around this screen. You will see um, all of the painting, all of the assembly, anything that's fabricated, all of that stuff will be in that video, how I added their hair and everything good like that. And also I will post more detailed and closer up and better photos on Facebook and Instagram. So definitely check out those accounts if you want to see a nice close up minion smile and I will see you in my next video. Bye.